Looking for scaffolding in and around London? All London Scaffolding is your go-to choice. Reliable, reasonable and polite. Click the link below or visit the website to claim your discount. Oi, oi, oi! We've got the proper guys now. We've got the professionals. So give it a rest. Stay there. Welcome back to AFTV. We got the win at Wolves. I thought we'd win at Wolves. I actually predicted 2 0. Yes, I will be picking that up on Forever Arsenal. But look, um, I'm not going to pretend I was thoroughly entertained by that first half. Um, in fact, I'm jumping ahead. Let's start with the 11. Because I wasn't thoroughly entertained by that first half. But I also never felt the game was massively in danger of getting away from us. Um, Wolves had injuries. Like going into this game, Wolves had injuries. Neto, Cunha, Norio only on the bench. Like, that hampered them, right? And you saw that while they defended fairly resiliently, that's the one I'm going to go with, um, you could also see that they lacked, you know, punch going the other way. Now, to be fair, Arsenal made very good teams with fully fit players, you know, and fully fit squads struggled to get near our goal. But yeah, they were lacking a little bit of counterpunch, uh, Wolves. You saw that in the 11. Arsenal went with Havertz in midfield. I asked the question on Twitter, I, I thought, you know, I think a lot of people think this will be the Villa setup with Trossard all the way out on the touchline, Havertz bursting in beyond, getting on the end of the Zinchenko over the top balls in behind Villa's defence, and Jesus very much up top, linking everything up. He saw Jesus drift left a lot so that Trossard could move in field and Havertz could go up front. It's a, it's a movement of the positions we saw a lot in the friendly against Barcelona on pre season tour, and we've seen it sort of sparingly uh, this season. And, you know, probably because of Jesus' injuries, probably because Havertz had to play full-time up front. And because Trossard's been in and out of the eleven with the likes of Martinelli playing at times. So, it was interesting he went for that. Did it work? I think it worked for some players. I, th I think, you know, Havertz, Jesus and Trossard were all a level above their performances against Villa last week. I think I'll say that. Um, across the whole 90, for sure, anyway. Um, Jesus does really well for the goal because we were struggling to make a lot happen in that first half. Saka with a few times he got in behind. Ben White, I thought was great, by the way, Ben White. Lots of balls over the top. Saka getting into those good areas with his right foot, drilling the ball into the box. They never really quite landed for us. Um, and he thought, OK, Arsenal, like, they're, they're doing the nearly chance. You know, really good football and a nearly good chance. And I feel it was just a bit in front or just a bit behind. And you're thinking, so we're not playing badly. We're not really making Jose Sar work too much here. So Arsenal then equipped towards half time and thinking, mm, is it going to be one of those a bit like the last four games? Actually putting out a first half performance we could be proud of, but not going in with the lead. Step up, Leandro Trossard. There's a great super chat from a guy called Cesar on the watch along. He said, Trossard is an XG cheater. And he's absolutely right. And the expected goal that measures your, you know, basically the chance of that ball going in the back of the net, you know, how likely that chance from you know, the, the shooter to the position they're in, to what foot they're taking it with, to the defenders in front of them, whatever. You know, that unit of measurement invented in, you know, by the football data people, um, you know, tells you that Trossard doesn't have a great chance of really scoring you know, with the goal he does, but he is able to so often pull out a goal like that. You know, a bit of a scuffed effort where he's just had to do enough to get He's had to just get enough on the ball and he has. He's guided it away and into that top corner beautifully. Did the same against Everton. Different kind of finish, different kind of skill. But again, just did really well to manipulate a tight situation. Ball not perfect, but uses his technique and quality to put in the back of the net. We've talked about who are those players that provide those moments of quality in this Arsenal team, like De Bruyne can do, like Mo Salah can do. And Trossard isn't De Bruyne or Salah, but he's probably the closest in terms of a player who can produce those moments. And he did for Arsenal in this game. And, and look, as Wolves are stretched, we get the second goal. But that was very much a 1-0 performance. And, you know, that was ultimately the difference, that goal. I thought his performance was big as well. Tracking back loads, Trossard, I thought he was brilliant. Popping up into central areas. And the understanding with Havertz and Jesus, it worked in this game. But I think it always works. I think we lacked a little bit of natural fluidity at times. But then I think we're also wary that we had to go back to what worked really well for us, you know, in this big run in 2024, which was not being utterly scintillating. I know the fives and sixes would tell you we are, but look at some of those games, you know, West Ham, a couple set pieces and a penalty. Burnley, a penalty as well, a couple, was there a set piece in that? No, I don't think so. Like, 
it wasn't always wonderful football that got us all these goals. It was also being effective off set pieces, having a good platform with our defence. I think we went back to that a little bit more, which is I think why he went for Kivior at left back rather than Zinchenko. Now, Kivior struggled at times, but also did some OK things. And that's pretty much what we'd have got from Zinchenko performance anyway. So, um, yeah, ultimately, Arteta got the 11 right. The team played well, thoroughly deserving of the win. I will say second half much better. I thought second half we went up a level. We took that first goal and we built on it. Declan Rice really controlling that midfield, um, playing through them a lot more. Maybe that's because Wolves had something to chase. They opened up a bit, but I just thought we looked really good. And then they came back into it until Partey came on and then we got back on the ball and started playing a little bit. And that balance of Partey, Rice, Erdogan was good. Martinelli, I think, gave them something to worry about the other way. So suddenly they weren't quite as squeezed up because they knew we could go from one end of the pitch to the other very quickly. And Arteta got his changes right. You know, I've been critical when he's got things wrong, or I think he's got things wrong. Like I always say, what do I really know? I felt he's got things wrong in terms of subs and maybe squad management a little bit. But I think in this game, bringing Partey on, that's exactly what we needed in that midfield. He could have left Havertz in there for his height and his presence and combativeness, which he, for all your criticism of Kai Havertz, of which I also have many, he gets about, he works hard. So he could have left Havertz in midfield, but he didn't. He recognised we need to free up Rice a little bit and get Partey in there, not just for a defensive midfielder added to the pitch, but actually to get on the ball. And he was picking up the ball in nice areas and keeping us moving and settling us back into the game, which I think was big because ultimately think about it, 1-0 going up to 90, minute 93, 94, 95. Wolves didn't actually stress us that much. We were pretty comfortable and dealt with everything very, very well. So um, Arsenal managed the occasion. Look, people, so I said on the Lucy fan cam, I said, you know, I could show you the same glass, right? It's half full. But some will tell you it's half empty. Did we just lose one game against a team in the top four who will probably get Champions League football, you know, amongst 13 or 14 games, is it, where we've won every single other one bar a draw against City at the Etihad? And actually, the panic around our title credentials was a bit much. Or was it three games in a row where when the going got tough and we had the chance to go top of the league and we had a chance to book a place in the same final as the Champions League against a Bayern Munich side that have struggled? Did we, you know, throw it away? Did we miss a big opportunity? And the reality is a bit of both. I think Arsenal did make errors in those games. I think Arsenal did lose their nerve a little bit. I also think Arsenal were tired. I think Arteta could have done more to stop that. But the damage was never so bad that we shouldn't have had all eyes and focus on getting three points, you know, here today and chucking the pressure back on Man City. And we got the opportunity to do that. We've now beaten Wolves. Fulham hosts Liverpool. So we're talking about our title rivals. The next five games or six games, I think, amongst the three title chasing teams, Arsenal are at home because they got their away win done. Chelsea, sorry, not Chelsea. Well, Chelsea come to Arsenal. That's our next one. So we're at home next. Liverpool go to Fulham. Man City go to Brighton. And then they go to Forest. And then Liverpool go to Everton as well in midweek. So they've got a lot of away trips while we're about to host Chelsea at home. Now, of course, I know Tottenham are to come on the weekend and that's going to be big. Um, but let's just put the points on the board and ask the questions of our rivals and then see where we're at. Ultimately, win your games and who knows where you're at. I agree with Lucy. I agree with Turkish. I think if we win all six, then there might be one more city slip there. I'm not entirely convinced, but do we win all six? Who knows? I just think today was about getting back to winning ways. And I just think we did it in a very professional way controlled, comfortable manner. And I think fair play to the team. That was a good win. Shout out to Ben White. Very good. Trossard was my man of the match. Declan Rice, big again. And everyone else ultimately played for a full 90 and gave it their all and got a big three points, which we needed. And yeah, we were the chasers today and we, we caught them. But they got a game in hand. All we can do is our job. All eyes on uh, the next couple of games because this next week's going to be massive. Catch you in a bit.